Hello, it's Andy from Keyword Insights, and I'm going to show you how to make sense of your clustering report once it's finished running. Now, it should end up straight in your inbox, but you may uh, go to your projects and just get it from clicking one of these options here. In any case, if we go back to our clustering here, you can see we've got six tabs and you may have all those tabs or you may only have some of those tabs. It depends on what options you've clicked here. So in this example, I have selected all options, cluster, context, rank, and title AI. And consequently, I have all six tabs. If you haven't selected all those options, you won't have all these tabs. The main tab is this one, I guess, uh, because this has all your raw data in. So it's got your keyword, obviously, and the search volume. It's got your cluster, your hub, and your spoke which is easier seen in this tab here, and we'll go through in a second. These are if you've selected the context tab here, and that's where we're trying to work out intent. So what we're saying here is, well, for this keyword, seven out of the top 10 results are an article, two are product pages, and so the dominant intent is informational, because seven out of the top 10 are articles. We pull through the rank and the ranking page, uh, and those two have been worked out if you've selected rank. We also have current estimated traffic and then maximum traffic and then the opportunity. And how this has worked out is it looks at your current rank. It looks at the search volume of that keyword and it applies like a click through rate curve. So what we're saying is your estimated traffic is actually where you currently rank. So three would be probably about 8%. So if you're going to position three, you're probably going to get about 8% of that search volume. And that gives you that estimated traffic. The maximum traffic is if you ranked in position one. So in position one, you're going to get 16% of uh, that search volume over here. And then the opportunity is the difference between these two numbers here. So you can see if you rank in position one, the opportunity is going to be zero because you, you literally can't you know, get any more, right? Whereas if you rank in position two, uh, the opportunity will be the difference between your estimated traffic and the maximum traffic. And then these four columns are your title AI suggestions, if you've toggled this option here, where we use AI to actually come up with some title ideas for you. So you can see here for the keyword, keyword research, we've come up with how to do keyword research for your website, the basics of keyword research, 10 tips for keyword research, and how to find the right keywords for your business. So we've come up with those titles using AI. So that's where all your raw data is and you can you know, create a pivot table uh, and you know, make, make this however you want. And you can you know, select a new sheet and select what options you wanna pivot by. These are the pivot tables we've already made for you down here. So this is where we've pivoted it by keyword for you. I've done a bit of data clearing up, so your sheet won't look exactly like this. I have collapsed all the columns by right-clicking and collapsing them all, and I've just got rid of the decimal points because I find it easier to work with. Um, but in your pivot table by keyword, what you have is, is your main clusters, really, and where you unroll this, you can see all the keywords that make up this one cluster. So what we're saying is all these keywords here can be targeted on this one page and all these keywords here can be targeted on this one page. So it just, you know, if you're uploading a massive list of keywords, it just helps clean it up. We've also pulled through the ranking page, and that's because we've selected rank here, and we've pulled through the, the search volume, which when you roll that up, you've obviously got the sum of the search volume. So you can see here, we're not now just looking at a single keyword volume, and going, oh, we can get 8,000 if we target SEO keyword research. We can actually target 89,000 because we can rank for all these keywords. So it's a bit more realistic. And especially then when you look at the opportunity, because we're taking into account your current rank, and we're not just saying if you rank in position one, you're going to get 100%. This is a more realistic number if you optimize this page uh, here, which we can see the average rank is two and three. So... Collectively, um, we can basically do some work just to bump this up and get this massive opportunity. Uh, and we've got through the context as well. So very quickly, what I can do with this report is, well, first of all, I can scan down and look for the clusters with the most opportunity and optimize them. So the average rank of this one is two. So actually, 
but it's a huge win here. So probably a little bit of link building on this one, and that will bump that up massively. Maybe I could actually look into it and see if my content could be produced as well. But certainly link building, because that's a huge opportunity just to nudge it up one. But if I scan down and find these ones where the average position is 100 or 96, this likely indicates the fact that I don't have any content at all. So for example here, I could write a whole article on Amazon keyword research because I don't have anything. There's no ranking page, there's no average rank, uh, and the opportunity is actually pretty high. So that's also a way to quickly scan down and find content gaps. If you find one where your average rank is like 64 uh, and you unload it, so what you can see here, uh, sorry, unravel it, you can see like gaps and multiple URLs ranking. That likely indicates one of two things. Either we don't have a decent enough piece of content focusing just on, on this keyword, and therefore we should create one. Or what we might find is if we have three or four URLs that are answering the same question, but ranking throughout here, it could show that we're cannibalizing ourselves. So imagine if we add three URLs in here, one was saying, SEMrush keyword research, SEMrush keyword research, SEMrush keyword research, and then a few other URLs were how to do keyword research for SEMrush, how to do keyword research for SEMrush. Uh, and then a few other URLs were, um, you know, SEMrush keyword lists or something like that. Then it's probably a good indication that you're cannibalizing yourself. So you can also find cannibalization issues very quickly in this report. That is also what this report aims to do. So what we've done here is actually, instead of pivoting it by keywords, we've pivoted it by URL. So if you unravel these URLs and you're seeing multiple clusters ranking, it may show you that you are cannibalizing yourself. So what we can see, like look, is for this one, my, uh, YouTube, how to optimize videos for YouTube, we've got a few different clusters ranking. And if you take the premise that a cluster should only have one page ranking, we've got keyword research tools for YouTube, keyword research tool for YouTube, and YouTube keyword research, and the average rank across them isn't very good, which means they're probably answering all of those topics in this one post, and perhaps they should look at that and separate them out. This report can be used to quickly find potential cannibalization opportunities. And I say potential, sometimes you might have um, two or three clusters, but you're all ranking on page one. Of course, you don't want to combine them because you've got two or three positions all in the top 10. Um, but it does make it easier to maybe find potential ones. Uh, the next report I wanted to go through is this hub one here. Now, it's important at this point to explain what the hub is and what it isn't. For the clusters, what we've done here is we have grouped keywords based on their similarity in the search engines, right? So if more, if, depending on your settings that you've set here, if you left it at four at default, what we're doing is grouping keywords together if they share four or more URLs in common. Of course, you can change that here. So if you put it up at eight, we're going to group it by eight and you're going to have loads more clusters, but with fewer keywords in. You're going to become stricter with how we cluster those keywords. We do this by analyzing live search results. Okay. And the cluster is always named after the keyword with the most search volume in that cluster, just because we needed to name it something. So we've named it after that. The hub, we use natural language processing. So it's not always going to be perfect and depending on your niche and there's a whole video on this that I can uh, link out to but depending on your niche you may have wanted to set this to harder because what we're doing is using natural language processing and how we're looking at this is we're going okay right how how did these how did this cluster relate to all the other clusters what we wanted to do was group the clusters together clustering the clusters so to speak and of course you can't do that by analyzing Google, we've got to use some other tools. So we've used natural language processing and we're grouping clusters together based on how similar they are semantically. If, for example, you've got a really broad niche, you probably wanted to have set that to medium because you want to group everything to do with sports together, all the clusters to do with sports together. However, if you're just if you're just a sporting niche that focuses on golf, you probably wanted to group that to harder because you don't just want to group everything to golf together because then it's pointless you might want to group everything to do with golf clubs together and everything to do with golf balls together. So depending on how broad or narrow your niche is, you, you want to toggle this. Um, I think I've set this to medium for this example. 
And as you can see, when I unload or unravel the cluster, oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong tab. When I unravel the cluster top 10 keyword research tools, we can see these are all the related clusters. Top 10 keyword research tools, best keyword research tools, best keyword research services, best keyword research niche tool. So we can start to see how we've got different topics around re keyword research tools. We probably have one around keyword research tools in general. Uh, one around, I probably ignore this one, and this is an example where a cluster has been grouped together just because of how similar it is, but it's not similar enough for me to actually include it in my hub. Uh, I probably then have another one, niche keyword research tools, and I probably ignore the other one. So out of this hub, I've probably got two content ideas, which is keyword research tools in general and best keyword research niche tools. Again, the hub is named after the cluster with the most volume. And if you remember, the cluster with the most volume is named after the keyword with the most volume. So this hub name isn't going to be what your hub's called. Uh, this hub is simply named after, because this is the cluster with the most volume, and this is the keyword with the most volume. So that's that's how the hub gets its name. So please don't think, oh, this is what my hub needs to be called, top 10 keyword research tools, and then I'll make a load of content off the back of it. That's not the case. It's simply a way for you to group similar clusters together. Similarly, we've called this spoke uh, because they are technically your spokes are all your ancillary bits of content that could all be grouped together and, and formed and, and situated on a hub. But really this, this could be called cluster because these are just your clusters that have been grouped together. So let's go through another one example. Keyword research for e-commerce. We'd, we'd maybe, we'd, we'd create a big guide called keyword research for e-commerce uh, and these are the keywords we could target. But we could also have a guide keyword research for eBay, which makes sense. Um, keyword research important so another guide on the importance of keyword research free commerce and then an ultimate guide to that really um i potentially don't have enough keywords in this data set which is why that's not coming up very high so what i would end up having is you know this huge guide on um the importance of keyword research free commerce which would link to another guide on how to do keyword research free commerce and that guide would link to another guide called keyword research free bay and you can see all the keywords you target in that. So that's what this tab is. That's what the hub is and it isn't. It's not giving you the name for the hub. It's it's, it's not and the name and the, and the name of these hubs are just based off of the keyword with the most volume and the cluster with the most volume. And all we've done is group clusters together. So it won't always be perfect. Uh, it might actually be unuseful uh, for your niche, depending on how you set the hub creation method here. Um, this is just a, a cluster data. So this is just showing you the clustered keywords. To be honest, it's a pretty pointless uh, report because you can get that information here. And then finally, you've got all your title AI suggestions here as well, which again, you might not use because it is all in this key tab here. So that is how to interpret your clustering report. Um, you'll mainly be spending your time in this one looking at your clusters. Uh, you will probably use the hub tab, but again, it's, it's just to help you quickly identify clusters that are similar to each other. It's not to get the name of the hub. It's not designed to tell you, you know, what your hub should be called and what the spokes are. It just helps you group content together quickly uh, and map things out. It can also help you find internal linking opportunities quickly, actually, because if you drop that down and you've got an average rank between all these clusters. So here we actually have content for all of these clusters, right? As you can see. Um, I don't pull through the URL, but we do have an average rank. It means if we've got different URLs ranking for these, and you may wish to edit your pivot table to bring that in, if you've got different URLs ranking, you can find your internal linking opportunities very quickly. So, yeah, I hope that makes sense, and let me know if you've got any questions. Thank you very much.